Welcome to Company Showcase, an advertising feature on HowStreet.com. I'm your host, Jim Goddard. We're speaking with Dale McClanagan. He's the CEO of Lotus Ventures. Welcome to the show, Dale. Hi there. Dale, can you tell us a little bit about Lotus Ventures? Yes, Lotus Ventures is a medical marijuana company. We're uh, located here in British Columbia, and uh, we're applicants to become licensed producers. And uh, is that going to be for medical marijuana or recreational marijuana? Well, initially, it'll be medical marijuana. The uh, standards and the regulatory framework will be the same for uh, recreational uh, marijuana uh, when it becomes legal in 2018. But it's the same uh, regulatory protocol. And uh, what we're looking forward to is receiving our license to produce, finalizing our financing, and getting our facility up and running. How long is it going to take to get Health Canada approval? We've been we've been in the process, like a, a very large number of uh, LP applicants, for about 18 months, two years now. Uh, but along with the announcement last week of the legalization uh, terms, we've also been told that Health Canada is going to add additional resources and personnel to uh, getting more licensed production in place. Yes, you're going to really have to improve uh, the way they do things. It's been so slow up till now, but like most government things, it takes them a while to get it done right. Are you actually pleased that they're taking their time to get everything set up? There's been a very logical process uh, around the, the whole cannabis industry over the last, frankly, three or four years. And up until this point, it's essentially been Cannabis 1.0 with the regu- with the Health Canada setting up a very thorough consumer protection and security system and have worked through the production issues with the initial applicants. It's now about 40 producers. And I think what's going to happen next is the next generation, Cannabis 2.0, of producers like us that have probably more sophisticated professionals involved real capital base, and an expertise who will let us grow quickly uh, to fill this, what's going to be a very large market. What kind of effort has gone into setting up Lotus Ventures? It's pretty complicated. It's not like just growing a couple of uh, roses. Yeah, I think that, that the group of us that have been together uh, organizing this uh, come out of other industries, and, and we sort of recognize it as a commercialization venture opened up by government regulation, frankly. And um, the artisan or the home grower that was under the previous uh, medical marijuana rules, frankly, were uh, often doing a good job, but it's very hard to scale that up. And as a commercial venture, I think that we bring the resources to be able to reliably grow good quality a product that tests well, that meets the regulatory needs, that provides for consumer protections around product recalls and standard standardization of uh, reliable reporting on, on the actual product itself. The uh, thing that we see moving forward is a resolution of making the entire marijuana and cannabis sector uh, regulated reliable, and that will give governments more confidence that they can restrict marijuana from getting to young people, which is a major public uh, policy goal, while providing adults with a reasonable choice of product and safety. What kind of financial efforts have you put into the company so far? To date, we've uh, raised about a million dollars in capital. We trade on the Canadian Stock Exchange under the symbol J. And Lotus Ventures is also finalized a firm contract for an additional $12 million of financing for facility construction. So the, to date, we've probably spent in the range of half a million dollars on licensing and securing our land and initial designs. Now, some people have suggested who needs to go and buy marijuana. Legally, you're allowed to grow some plants. Why do you think for some people or a lot of people that's not a good idea? Well, I think it's 
It's similar to, frankly, wine making. And anybody can make wine at home, and, and many do. But, but the quality and the convenience, it's, it's much easier to go out and get a product which is uh, predictable, standardized, uh, you know what you're going to receive, and, and, uh, and convenient. And I think that there'll be folks who elect under the new legislation to grow their own. And, and that's a legitimate choice. But I think if you're purchasing a product in the marketplace, you should have the kind of consumer protections that we're used to in any other pro- uh, product. There's some debate about branding the product once it goes commercial. How important that is that to Canadian producers? I think that there, I think there'll be, there should be a degree of branding available. I don't, that when one looks at, at what's available in the medical marijuana, uh, there are 30 or 40 common strains, and there are much difference between one and another for for uh, therapeutic benefits as well as for recreational benefits. And I think that branding will be part of almost a consumer education uh, element of this. Again, people understanding what it is is going to be more of a relaxant maybe, and I think there'll be a lot of what looks like recreational use being u- for medical uh, purposes. And I think that traditionally what's happened here in the last 10 years is there's a lot of uh, purported medical use, which has frankly been recreational. When it comes to branding, I'm sure there's some confusion about sorting out different varieties and their effects and who grew it. That would be almost like going into the liquor store and just saying, well, I'd like some beer. Well, there's uh, 16 different varieties of beer, but you don't know who made them. It just says uh, this is a, a malt liquor, this one's a lager, and so on. Absolutely. And uh, when, when I think at the, about the initial legalization in Canada for medical purposes, uh, uh, the government of Canada appointed a single producer um, I believe they were in Saskatchewan, and they were growing in, an, in, in a, a mine of all places where they could control all the elements. And frankly, they had a very poor quality product. And that was a philosophy that this was a generic product, and it demonstrated very low knowledge level about cannabis and the varieties and, and applicability of it for, for medical and recreational needs. In fact... Uh, Canada is a place which has had a huge amount of scientific research on the therapeutic values uh, of medical marijuana, a place where they've decoded the cannabis genome and have a thorough understanding of a variety of strains and things. And I think that from a big picture perspective, Canada's got a lot of expertise in this um, in this sector, and it's, it will become a time when we'll export that knowledge and probably export our product. Product. Will there be a big difference between medicinal marijuana and recreational marijuana? No, I don't think so. I think that I think that the types of strains that that uh, consumers go with for one versus another will probably differ. So call it a difference in product mix, but. Product standards, reliability, and safety, which is a central part of the Health Canada's mandate, will be the same. I've noticed in both the provincial and federal budgets, they've made no mention of potential revenue from marijuana, which if you look at the states, they're reporting that they're collecting more than double what they expected. Can Canada expect the same, and why hasn't the government projected revenues? I think the government's uh, first goal is there. We, we need to remember that they're legalizing to better restrict and regulate. They're not legalizing to promote it. And there's particularly high awareness that uh, marijuana use by young people is uh, is ill-advised and and can cause some harm. Overall, the notion of the prohibition of cannabis has demonstrated social harms. Uh, that far exceed individual uh, problems. And, and we're still aware that there are problematic circumstances for people overusing cannabis. And what we're seeing is, first, the government wants to establish a market share through legitimate channels that is 
has offer the product safety and uh, also or is being restricted to adults. I think the second step on the taxation side will there'll probably be an increase in that uh, aspect later, like an excise tax. But even capturing just PST and GST uh, is, is going to be a very significant contributor to uh, coffers. Is this going to help law enforcement because you won't have organized crime, at least uh, up front, trying to grow this product anymore? I think so. I think that the way the sector evolved, largely by the way the courts were, were treating medical uh, marijuana side, is it became a very high margin, low risk enterprise for, for uh, organized crime. And the vertically integrated from growing to distribution to frankly retail and uh there's the proceeds of that was going to finance other cr- criminal activities and of course escaping taxation and the rest and creating you know probably not as much harm to users other than the fact that of contamination and other product quality questions but causing more community harm through the criminal um, act, other criminal activities. Dale, can you again uh, just give us a brief sketch of Lotus Ventures, where it's traded, and how people can contact the company? Yeah, yeah. Lotus Ventures were uh, traded on the Canadian Stock Exchange under the symbol J, and uh, they can contact us at our website, LotusVentures.ca, uh, and we'd certainly welcome a phone call. You can call me at 604-644-9844 anytime. Dale, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you, Jim. We've been speaking with Dale McClanagan, CEO of Lotus Ventures. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on Company Showcase are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Archived online at HowStreet.com. Company Showcase is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.